Okay, so here is um, a good question because it is very unique, I think, to our practice and maybe our Zen culture or Buddhist culture. Something we're really not used to in the West, which is what is a Dharma name? Why do people have these uh, strange foreign names when they get involved with uh, Buddhism? Uh, it actually comes from an, an interesting, I think, a very interesting way of looking at our practice, and it really does help us. They have a lot of different meanings, and people do for different reasons, so I'll go through some of the basic ones real quick. First of all, the name that you may see on this video or uh, on this channel or if you visit our website, my Dharma name is Hoden, which is actually the Japanese pronunciation of two characters that I was given. The Korean pronunciation, as they know me in our Korean order, is Bukchon, B-U-P-C-H-O-N-H-O-D-E-N. They, they mean the exact same thing based on the, the characters. So I'll cover why we have Dharma names as clergy or as monks first, and then I'll get into why lay followers have them. When we go through ordination, when we uh, go through our training as Hengja or as an acolyte, and we get to a point where we become ordained as a junior uh, monk, let's say, uh, sama, sama nera uh, ordination. We're doing this as an act of renunciation. It is a ref, uh, it's reflective of the act that Siddhartha took when he went through his practice. He renounced his life. He renounced his kingdom. He was a prince within a, his kingdom. He let all of those things go to accept a different life, to become a different person. He let all of those things go to the point of, you know, cutting the long parts of his hair off and giving his fancy robes over to people and getting rid of his horse and his attendant and so forth. It's an act of letting go of our previous self. Now, modern renunciation, or the way I view modern renunciation, is that we have to, in some ways, let go of our previous self. And the name helps us to do that. We're born and raised when we're, we're born our parents, name us something. And that is the thing that we attach our ego to for a really long time growing up and through our lives. And people say your given name and you respond. You hear somebody say that and you think, oh, that's this thing, that's me that they're talking to. So practically names are great, but we also have our names tied to whatever life that we've lived. So Dharma names in some ways can be a good way and an act of renunciation to let go of our, what we call mundane life, our mundane self, prior to taking on this next stage in our lives. That's one aspect of why a monk would end up taking a different name through this act of renunciation. It also has a very practical sense within orders, um, different Buddhist orders of understanding lineage. So the names are chosen in a very particular way. Uh, they all share families, usually two characters, and everybody along the same line that maybe had the same uh, Dharma father or Dharma mother um, would all start with the same name. So um, I have a number of uh, brothers and sisters within the Bup family, B-U-P means Dharma. So there's a lot of different names. Bup Chun is the second part that's unique to me, but that second part can be along anybody else. We know when we look at our lineage that all of our teachers also started with a different name as well and something that they all share and then the next level up, next level up. As all of uh, the, my brothers and sisters within uh, our lineage, we now have a new generation coming out. We've just ordained our first person within this new lineage, uh, one of my first disciple. So my first disciple now has a name and anybody that gets into that same thing, any of the bub, uh, clergy that end up having a disciple, they will be renamed with that new first part of their name and so on. So it's not uncommon to uh, say take precepts and take on a Dharma name uh, and then go through training and be ordained and take another name and then if you switch to a different lineage to change that name again. That's something we're not really used to in the Western world. We don't just randomly change our names uh, because of different things that happen, but in Asian countries it's very common. Very common to have different names for different things within the arts. I have a, a name, a specific name within the Japanese sword arts that I teach within that lineage and that hierarchy. Artists a lot of times can have an artistic name for calligraphy or other things like that. So 
in the sense of clergy, we're doing it for enunciation, we're doing it for lineage, we're doing it um, to understand that we're letting go our previous lives. Now, for a lay follower, somebody that doesn't go through the process to become a monk or a Dharma teacher, when they take precepts, five basic precepts, in some way, they are doing the exact same thing that I just said. They're letting go of their previous selves and they're joining into a Sangha, joining into a Dharma family within the Sangha. And all of the people who take precepts together as a Dharma family also share the first character. They have a second character that's unique to them. So it's a way of understanding that I am renouncing my previous habits, that I am now taking on these five precepts or these five guidelines to live my life by, and that we have all done that together, and now it's like creating a new form of a family within the Sangha. We can all believe that we have all dedicated ourselves to try to at least have these five uh, pathways in common. The last thing I want to cover is that personally, when you get a Dharma name, if you go through process and take precepts to get a Dharma name, aside from the act of renunciation, they can be a focus. They can be something uh, that you work with within your practice. What does it actually mean? My, my Dharma name, Hoden or Bupchun, translates directly as Dharma field. So for Dharma field as a name, I can use that within my practice to understand what is that? What is exactly a Dharma field? What do I do? What is the Dharma that I am putting into the world? What am I growing? What am I uh, you know, reaping? What am I sowing? What, am I, what seeds do I plant? It became actually over a long period of time something that I use very often in the way that I teach analogies about people who um, put things into the world and what they grow. Um, you know, I often use the idea of that Dharma teachers or monks are planting the seeds of Dharma in other people, and sometimes you see where they grow, and sometimes where they don't. Where they, uh, you know, don't you don't see where they grow. Understanding your own personal Dharma name can have a lot of different layers. It can have that kind of very direct meaning that you can translate, and sometimes it's something that you work with for a very long period of time, and it gains new meaning over time, and maybe it helps you within your practice.